Hi everyone, it's Heather again. And when Vania first asked me about whether or not I want to do, do something like this with you all, the reason that this topic came up in my mind is because we often find caregivers, educators, parents who rightly so are interested in their children being able to write their name, um, beginning to write letters, when in reality, there are so many things that we can do that are developmentally appropriate before that to help the writing process be smooth and easy when that time comes. So as opposed to just um, having three and four year olds being drilled with writing marks um, over and over and over, there are things we can do when they are zero, one, two, and three to help with that process. So I, I liken it to learning to dive. Um, you know, when you dive, you don't just go out and dive 60 feet the first time. You have to take a course, you have to learn hand signals, you have to figure out your breathing, you have to be able to clear your mask, you have to feel comfortable, you have to figure out how much weight you use. There are a lot of different things that you have to do before you just go out and dive, right? So same thing with beginning to write as a young child. There are things that we can do as adults to help that process be easier for the children when the time comes. These are some pre-writing skills, great graphic, and a lot of these, whether you have the exact materials at your disposal or not, you can come up with different ways to do these things. But the idea is that children are learning to use fine motor skills. So that is small muscles. They're learning to grasp, they're learning to use their hands in different ways. They're using their fingers, the whole hand. They're using those small muscles. And they're also being given an opportunity to use real materials that have meaning to them, authentic materials. And they're also able to be creative, which is a big one as well. It's not just do this for the sake of doing it, but do this because it has meaning and it's fun and you can be creative. So here's some other examples of things that we can do as pre-writing skills, you know, using popsicle sticks, fingers in sand, using paint, anything that we're able to feel because it's also a sensory exercise smell and touch because all of that makes meaning for young children. Here are a couple other pictures that I wanted to share and in particular the two that have um, rocks in them. These are fairly typical Reggio inspired provocations or writing centers, setups, and I know that Paradise Babies staff are quite inspired by Reggio, and you can see that just using a paintbrush and water is one way that children can use those fine motor skills, having those, again, those real materials, rocks, Paint swatches, I'm not sure that those can be found on the island, but uh, maybe somebody could bring you some. And then you can see pipe cleaners with a colander or strainer, whatever you might want to call that. I know we did this when I was there a few years ago. Giving children opportunities to use those fine motor skills. When we talk about children learning to write and learning to use their fine motor skills, we often refer to different types of grasps. So the first one being the pincer grasp, and you can see that's being able to use the thumb 
and pointer finger. So when a child learns to pick up a Cheerio, then they're using the pincer grasp as opposed to their whole hand to pick something up. And you can see how it progresses. We all um, culturally may have been taught how to hold a pencil in a different way, but what you see as the dynamic tripod grasp for the five and six year olds, that's quite common for the quote correct way to hold a pencil. But the idea here is that it comes in stages, that it's a sequence. And typically, you know, we can't do this before we do this. So it's a sequence. And younger children are not going to be able to hold the pencil using a tripod grasp because they don't yet have that ability in their fingers. They don't yet have those fine motor skills. So here's a fun graphic for us to look at that explains drawing development. So no, this was writing, but this one also talks about drawing. And you can always go back and refer to this and read it in a bit more detail. But for two year olds, we're going to start with the scribbling stage. And when um, sometimes older children may look at a younger child's work and say, oh, she's just scribbling. Well, it's not just scribbling because scribbling is their writing. It's their drawing. So it's their attempt to portray the visual world. They're using marks and maybe they mean something to them and maybe they don't. But if we skip that scribbling stage, then we haven't given children the opportunity to explore different writing materials. Then for three and four year olds, it turns into the pre schematic stage. And so now they're starting to think about creating something that they know when they, you know, you might think, oh, um, I wonder what your favorite animal is. And they start to draw that. It's going to look similar. It may be missing a few legs or it might be missing um, things in the correct spot, but it's clearly recognizable. And then the schematic say, stage is when the child arrives at a schema. So this is a definite way of portraying an object. It could be modified and then there's definite order when it comes to space relationships. You can see in this example, everything is kind of on the same bottom line. And then we get more into realism. And I know that's a little bit older than perhaps the children that are attending Paradise Babies, but I know also that you do some art classes and summer camps and so still a bit relevant. But again, the idea is that these things happen in stages and in a sequence and that's the way it goes. You can't just go straight to drawing things that look real. Okay. So stages of writing, this one doesn't have ages listed with it because sometimes development is different for different children. And so I think that's okay to look at this image, to look at these examples, knowing that, you know, we don't all learn to do the same things at the same time. Um, I learned to ride a bicycle perhaps sooner than others because I had parents that helped me learn to ride a bike and I had a sidewalk at my house. There are very few sidewalks in Rodian. It's kind of hard to learn to ride a bicycle because there aren't a lot of safe places to ride. So there are differences in how we develop. But the stages are in the far left-hand column and then the description of that stage and then the example. So for those of you who are educators, this may be something that would be good for documentation. So when you keep a sample of children's work and perhaps a parent wants to understand, well, why are you giving this to me? It's just scribbling. You can say, well, this is the second stage in emergent writing and it leads to scribbles mocking handwriting. 
which leads to making letter-like forms and on and on and on. So again, I know I've said this three times already, but it's a sequence. Things happen in stages. We can't say that drawing and scribbling and you know just the lines like in the third one are not important. They're very important. And to the child, it may have some meaning. So you can allow that child to pretend to write a grocery list with you or write a letter to grandma because then it's gonna have meaning. It's not just making line after line after line after line. It's also realizing that letters make words, which make sentences, and that all has meaning. Um, so I pulled up, in particular, some standards from Tennessee's Early Learning Developmental Standards. That's where I live now. I used to use North Carolina's because I was in North Carolina. And there, each state in the United States has early learning standards. They're all very similar. So you're not going to see huge differences between California, Arizona, Texas, New York, Tennessee, and North Carolina. They're, they're going to be quite similar. So when uh, we look at this area of writing behaviors and skills for birth to 12 month olds, what we're looking for is that children this age may show some interest in writing tools and begin to use writing tools. Well, we all know that they're gonna put them in their mouths and that's okay as long as an adult is there to make sure that the crayon isn't eaten. But if we never give them the opportunity to hold that writing utensil, whether it's a paintbrush or a crayon or a marker, then they're not going to show interest in it and they're not going to begin to use it properly. So just exposing those older infants, you know, not four month olds, but the older infants to some writing materials is appropriate, even if it goes in their mouth, because that's how they're learning. We wouldn't obviously allow them to eat it, so you would monitor that and supervise that. For 13 to 24 month olds, we're doing the same thing, increasing interest in writing tools. They're gonna grasp the writing tool in their palm and begin to use those tools to make marks on paper. They know that when they put the mark on a paper, something's gonna happen. They're gonna get visual feedback. So, when we do this, we're giving children the opportunity to figure out, oh, well, a crayon looks different than a marker, then looks different than a pencil, then looks different than a pen. For 25 to 36 months, we're gonna use a variety of writing tools to make scribbles. This is when they're gonna start to scribble. And then it's gonna be intentional. And they're also gonna learn to draw a circle here. It's just gonna happen. They're gonna figure it out. And then up to four years, begin to attend to print in the environment. So they're going to see things. You know, they're going to know that Eldon says Eldon's. They're going to know when you pass by certain places, um, the beach grill, when you, when you pass by certain signs that it might say that. And in particular, they're going to pay attention to their own name. They're going to attempt to write their own name. In this age period, whether it really looks like their name or not, or letters may or may not be identified, they're gonna say, this is my name. And you say, great, you wrote your name, whether it looks like it or not to you, because that's the stage in which they are. So here are a couple resources for you that you can pull up. Um, the CDC has milestones that you can use for all different domains of development. And language development is definitely one of those in there. And you can pull these up by, in the younger ages, it's about every six months. So you know, six months, 12 months, 18 months. And then in the older years, it's yearly, so three, four, five. And then early, Illinois early learning, these tip sheets are great because they're easily readable and most of them are in Spanish. So they're uh, reader friendly. You 